Hey, what's up? I'm back. Here's part two of my recap video of Sunday's action. Uh, I got the 49ers and the Cowboys highlights ready to roll here, but uh, before I do, let's just quickly recap the other finals and just a quick like headline or my personal headline of how I think each game went. So yeah, uh, the Browns stunning the Ravens 29-24 and for an even bigger stunner, Jameis Winston. Filling in for the now lost for the season to Sean Watson. And I tell you what, <laughs> Jameis Winston already made Browns fans say, Deshaun who? We're behind Winston 100%. Former Mr. 30 for 30 didn't even have one single interception. Played an absolute beautiful game against the Ravens defense. Oh my gosh, that home run touchdown that put the Browns up for good. And, you know, we talk about the Commanders' uh, miracle win against the Bears. The Lamar Jackson almost led the Ravens to a miracle win himself. But, unfortunately, he just couldn't find anybody open. You know, all, the, all that running around, trying to buy time, and just couldn't find anyone open. So, credit to the Cleveland Browns. Like, I had a feeling this would be a close game because it's the AFC North. They always play each other tough, no matter who's doing what. And, yeah, give the Browns credit. Give Jameis Winston credit. That's a good win for Cleveland to maybe spark a late-season rally. We shall see. Joe Flacco did it. We'll see what Jameis Winston does. Or was this just a simple fluke in any given Sunday? But Browns fans can definitely enjoy this week because that's a good win for them. The Ravens, I think they'll be fine. It's a divisional opponent. Hard-fought loss. Lick the wounds and move on. Texans get a fight from the Colts. They prevail 23-20. Despite a subpar performance by Anthony Richardson, the Colts give the Texans a good fight. I expected it to be close. Again, divisional matchup. And the Colts, I think, are definitely becoming the Texans' biggest rival right now. Um, yeah, here was a game that kind of surprised me that was really close. Packers 30, Jaguars 27. Even with even before Jordan Love was lost for the game, the Jaguars were playing the Packers tough. So that's why I say the Eagles should definitely not take Jacksonville lightly. Maybe at home, the Eagles may be the way better team, but still, you know, you got to pay some respects. You got to play your opponents the way you think they are capable of playing, even if they don't. But, yeah. So you could say the Packers got a bit of a miracle win themselves when Malik Willis had to fill in for the injured Jordan Love. And Malik Willis has definitely proven to be a good relief pitcher. Completed only four out of five passes, but the biggest one, that 51-yarder to read, that set up the game-winning field goal, a hard-fought loss for the Jaguars. You might as well say they're pretty much done for this year. Packers are still balling, still trying to keep on the hook the heels of the red-hot Detroit Lions, who just mauled the Tennessee Titans 52-14. to I mean, it started off close. I was like, why is that game even close to begin with? They're like, I thought Detroit would, like, run the, would just pff, take Tennessee behind the woodshed, and eventually they did. Eventually they did. A lot. If anything, probably the biggest highlights out of that game was, uh, the, the 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 Detroit Lions special teams plays. Holy crap. Three big returns, one of them for a touchdown. And I tell you what, I hate to say it, but after five straight solid wins, six and one record, and like scoring like forty plus points out of most of those games, I think it's safe to say the Lions are the best team in the NFC right now. Might even be the best team in the NFL next to the Chiefs. But it's just the halfway point. And I think for tomorrow, I'll do a video for like the halfway mark of the season, you know, where I think all the teams stand and how the playoff picture is going to look. All right. The Falcons sweep the regular season series against the Bucks, 31 26. And the funny thing with the Atlanta Falcons is whenever I pick them, they lose. And when I don't pick them, they win. So I knew they'd win because I didn't pick them. And, you know, the Bucks are missing their top two receivers. Baker Mayfield throws two costly interceptions, but nearly leads the Bucks back. And, like, uh, Lamar Jackson nearly pulled out a miracle win for himself, but, unfortunately, his pass was caught out of bounds. So, Tampa Bay falls short. 
I still personally like the Buccaneers to win that division, despite the fact they just lost both meetings to the Atlanta Falcons. But it's the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, yeah, every now and then Kirk Cousins has a game like this where he balls out with four touchdowns. But then they just look absolutely the they look absolutely decrypted. They look like garbage the next week. So who knows? I count on the Atlanta Falcons to become the choke birds like they are at some point. And the Buccaneers will still find a way to get it done. Okay, here's a game that nobody cares about. The Patriots prevailing over the Jets, 25-22. Oh, Aaron Rodgers is not having much luck playing in New York. Shocker, it's the Jets. They're cursed, okay? I think we've established that since last year. This was definitely a good game worth watching. Cardinals edging the Dolphins, 28-27. Tua Tug of Viola comes back and nearly leads Miami to victory, but... Uh-oh, I went brain dead. I went brain dead. What the heck's the Cardinals... What's the Cardinals QB's name? McMurray? Murray? Jay Murray? Something? Oh, my God. Why am I blanking on his name? I was just reading about it. Oh, I hate when this happens. Kyler Murray. I know there was a Murray in there. Jeez Louise. I hate it when that happens. But, yeah, Kyler Murray, he's balling like 2021 Kyler Murray. Cardinals are definitely no team to sleep on. Might be only 4-4, four and four, but they're playing teams tough. So you got to give them that. All right, keeping on up here. Let's see, who's the next one? Of course, my Eagles over the Bengals. We capped that one. Chargers beating the Saints 26-8. Who gives a crap? Both teams suck, in my opinion. Uh, the Bills blowing out the Seahawks 31-10. That one shocked me. I thought that'd be a much closer game, but Buffalo, again, just being Buffalo, a good competitive team, but then we'll see what happens when we get to the postseason when they got to meet up with the Chiefs again. Of course, the Commanders' miracle win against the Bears, 18-15. That was just insane. My goodness. Chiefs, the Chiefs, I can't talk. Chiefs prevail in Vegas, 27-20. Not surprised this game was close. It's the Raiders. You know, they're the ones that give the Chiefs the most trouble. But Kansas City got the job done. They found a way to get it done. And I think there was a story about uh, Patrick Mahomes being the fastest player to like 30,000 passing yards. Is that what it was? Let me hear. Uh, Mahomes passed for 262. <laughs> So the winning streak is uh, 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 uh. Uh, here we go. Mahomes became the fastest quarterback in NFL history to reach 30,000 yards passing, doing it in his 103rd game. Wow. I love her, love him or hate him like Tom Brady. The guy's fun to watch. He's impressive in how he gets the job done. And like most of the passes that he does, any other player, any other quarterback that does that. It never goes the way you want it to. He's like Brett Favre, except half the time, his wild plays actually work. <laughs> All right, what else do we got? What else do we got? Should be about to the end here. Broncos beat the Panthers 28-14. Who gives a crap? Both teams suck. All right, here we go. Yep, we're up to the 49ers and the Cowboys. because you all know the result by now, but again... I didn't watch any of the game because by then I was footballed out and I wanted to play some video games. But I got the highlight package ready to roll here. So let's see how this game played out. So we have 49ers with the possession first. Purdy drops back to pass. He fires a completion. To number 14, I don't know who that is, but it's a first down for the Niners. Now here's a third and six for San Fran, behind their own 15. Purdy launches and completes it to Debo Samuel, who shakes off a defender and is finally tackled down next to the Cowboy 35. Here's a handoff to Mason, number 24. He picks up a few yards, four, maybe five at best. All right, here we have a 50-yard field goal attempt. The kick is up, and it is dead center. And the Niners take an early 3-0 lead. 
All right, here's Prescott and the boys with their first possession. Dak drops back to throws. He steps it up. He fires a completion. It's across the first down marker. It's number 20. I apologize that I don't know all the names of these players. Back to throw is Prescott. He steps it up. He fires, and it's going to be caught. That's CeeDee Lamb, and they say he got it. First down, Dallas. C.D. Lamb, <laughs> about the only real good thing the Cowboys have next to their kicker. Back to throw is Prescott. Oh, he's under pressure. He steps up. He launches, and it'll be intercepted at about the 9 or 10-yard line. That's number 27 who picked it off. Second down and four for the 49ers. About four minutes to go in the first. Purdy is rolling around in the backfield. Now he's... Stepping up on the right side and launches, completes his to George Kittle first at the 30. But, yeah, but I guess the drive goes for naught as the 49ers are now punting. And this guy gets a beautiful punt off. It's fielded in by number 9 at about the Dallas 20. And he's going to pick up a pretty good chunk of about 15. And we got a scrimmage going here. What do you expect? It's Cowboys 49ers. Prescott. Does a full 360 spin before he tosses it to number nine, who picks up the first down, but then he fumbles it. But I think Dallas got it back. All right, now we're in the second quarter. Third and four, Dallas at about midfield. Prescott rolling to the left, fires, completes it to C.D. Lamb, the number 88 club. First down, Dallas. Here's a handoff to number 15. I believe that's Ezekiel Elliott's new number, and he gets the first down for the Cowboys. Third down and 10, Dallas at the 9 or 20. Prescott dropping back. He's under pressure. He fires. He completes it to number 87, who takes about several hits and still manages to pick up a first down. Here's a first and goal for the Cowboys. Prescott fakes the handoff to Elliott. He's got a guy in his face. He's going to fire for the end zone, but it'll be knocked away incomplete. But there's a flag on Ward, so it sets up the Cowboys. First and goal, knocking on the end zone door. Prescott hands it off to Elliott, who runs it right in through a hole. Touchdown, Dallas. And the Cowboys have the lead. 6-3, Dallas. 10.58 to play in the first half. They are now replaying the highlight, showing the shift here by the offensive line that opened up the hole for a Zeke. Great work by the Cowboys' offensive line. They made the extra point. It's 7-3 Dallas now. 9.20 to play. 49ers outside their own 40. Here's a pass from Purdy to number 14 for a first down for San Fran. Here's a handoff to number 24. And he's going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage on third and four. 49ers are going for it on fourth and three. Just inside the Cowboys' side of the 50. And it's dropped by Debo. Dropped by Debo, who had a man on him, and the 49ers turn it over on downs with 6.32 to play till half. We fast forward now to the 4.44 mark. Here goes Prescott. He drops back. He's at about the 50-yard line. Now he's firing down the field, and it's going to be caught by number one. First down, Dallas inside the red zone, but there's a flag. I guess it was against the Niners because here are the Cowboys at the 10-yard line of San Francisco. Prescott with a floater to number 87. He catches it, but he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage, and he fumbles it. But the refs are going to say he's down by contact. Here comes the field goal attempt. It's up. It's good. Dallas extends the lead, 10-3. 2.56 to play in the first half. Niners back on possession. They're at about their own 35. Purdy hands it off, and this guy, number 31, is just running right through the Cowboys like they were tissue paper out to their 45-yard line. There's another run by number 31. Again, running through Dallas like they're tissue paper. He's up to the Cowboy 30-yard line. Who is that guy? He ain't CMC. Back to throw is Purdy. Oh, the pocket is collapsing. He gets it away, completes it to Kittle, and Kittle's going to get, he's going to be tackled short, but he at least picks up a decent chunk on third and 15. And I think they're replaying the exact same highlight. Yeah, they are. They're replaying the exact same highlight. Who is editing these? How do you not see that? 
For the love of God, it just drives me nuts. All right, here's a field goal attempt. 44-yard attempt. Minute 35 to go till half. Kick is up. The kick is good. And the Niners are now within four with 90 seconds to play until the half. Why are we showing the 10-second runoff? Why is that in the highlight reel? Hold on. Let me pause this. Let me pause this. Let me pause this. Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. Let me just play it out. Let me see what happens. No, no, I don't want that. Get off that. What did I just see? They literally had the Cowboys kneeling to run off the final 10 seconds into the half. Why is that in the highlight reel? Why is that even in the highlight reel? Like, I was expecting maybe a skirmish, but nothing. The Cowboys just need it. And we get a shot of Purdy on the on the sideline, and they go and it... Yo, NFL, whoever's editing these, slap your editor. Like, this is a guy that used to do editing in radio. That drives me bonkers. Useless highlights, pointless highlights, and replay highlights. Why was the same highlight played again, back to back? How do you miss that in the editing? And why are you showing a useless highlight like a kneel down to halftime? Are you serious? Come on. All right. That's all my ranting right there. Moving on to the second half now. Here's Pur here Purdy. Yeah, it is Purdy. It's Purdy. He's Purdy Purdy. <laughs> all right. Brock Purdy on the run. Second down and 10. And, yep, he's just going to tuck it in and run, and I believe he is able to pick up that first down just before he is taken down. All right, 49ers on the Cowboys' side of the 50. Purdy with a completion to Kittle, and Kittle's off and running. If it was flag football, he would have been stopped right there, but Kittle is knocked out of bounds inside the Cowboy 5, probably at about the 2-yard line. A good catch and run by George Kittle. First and goal, San Francisco. Man in motion, use check. Purdy's going to hand it off to a running back, and he is going to dive in for a 49er touchdown. It's number 31 again, Isaac Gerard, Gerendo. I'm sorry, Geren, Gerendo. Is that how you pronounce it? Isaac Gerendo. Again, just runs through the Cowboys like they're tissue paper, but that's just good blocking by the, Cow by the 49ers offensive linemen. Yeah, that was a little close to call. It may have looked like he was down first, but not before contact. Whoa, was that intercepted? Prescott throws another floater, and I think that was just intercepted. Holy moly. Yep, it was. That was an intercept. That was a tremendous interception for the 49er defense. Here's a pass from Purdy to Garendo. Inside the Cowboy red zone. Now here's third and goal for the 49ers. And here's a wide open George Kittle for the touchdown. But flags are all over the place. Oh, I see. Was that offensive interference? Oh, they say no foul, no offensive interference. Just looked like the Cowboy defender purposely ran the 49er player into his own guy. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's on the Cowboys. And the touchdown stands. Oh. I'm listening to the... I'm listening to that guy that explains the officiating calls. And yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. The guy that was following Purdy just... crisscrossed into another path. I mean... I think any other time, that probably would be offensive interference. I don't know. Here's Dak Prescott on the run, being chased down on a third and four. He fires it. It is incomplete, out of bounds. Good coverage by the 49er defense. Under five and a half to play in the third quarter. Purdy, um, I don't know if that was a busted play or not, but he tucks it in and he runs right through the Cowboys. 
So I guess the Cowboys can't defend anything through the middle on the ground. Here are the 49ers at their own 45. Purdy drops back to pass, steps up. He fires a beautiful laser pass to, who else? George Kittle. And they are deep in, they are deep in Cowboy territory again. San Francisco is starting to take control of this game here. About two and a half to play in the third. They're at the Cowboy 25. Purdy drops back. Fires through the middle. It's caught by Debo Samuel, who picks up the first down and more. Just won't go down. Third and goal. Purdy, he takes it. The 49ers do the brotherly shove, and it's a touchdown. 49ers. Brock Purdy. San Francisco starting to run away with this one and making it look easy. Seriously, what happened to the Cowboys? I mean, the defense, if anything. All right, here's Prescott on a third and five. Now into the fourth quarter, and Prescott will go down. It's a sack for number 91 of the 49ers. 49ers with about 13 and a half to play behind their own 20. Here's a handoff. I missed who it was, but he is close to the first down. Yep, it's Garendo. I apologize if I mispronounced the name. I forgot it just that quickly. Purdy on a rollout. Looked like he was going to tuck it in and run. And oh my goodness. Oh, in his face. He had a couple Cowboy defenders deflect the ball. And it was nearly intercepted. Ooh, that would have been some huge momentum swing for Dallas. Now with about 11 minutes to play. Here's Prescott tossing it up. And did he make the interception before he went out of bounds? No, he did not. There is a flag with 11 minutes to go in the game. It's 27-10 right now, 49ers. They called defensive interference on the 49ers. So fresh set of downs for the Cowboys. Here's a fourth and four at about the 49er 45. Prescott fires down through the middle. Completes it to number nine for a Cowboy first down. Now they're inside the 49er 30. Prescott immediately fires, completes it to number one. He shakes off a defender, and I think he gets enough for the first. No, he's just about short. By a yard. Second down and one. Prescott fires, and it is caught diving and tumbling out of bounds by C.D. Lamb. Second down and goal for the Cowboys. Back to throw is Prescott. Behind the 15. Now he fires it wide open as C.D. Lamb. Touchdown, Dallas. Whoa, where was the coverage on that one? My goodness. You could have had a flock of geese fly through that hole. That was insane. Oh, yeah, CD was on the other side, and he just ran a crisscross pattern, and for some reason, nobody picked him up. All right, here they go with a wide receiver. Reverse run play, number 14, and he just picks up the first down easy with extra yardage to go. Seven minutes to go in the game. 49ers looking to run this one out. Back to throw is Purdy at about the Dallas 25. He is under pressure. He fires it. A floater out of bounds. Incomplete on third and six. Here's a 41-yard attempt. And the kicker that wears number 41, he makes it. It's now 30-17 to 17 Cowboys. I mean 49ers, excuse me. Four minutes to go. Prescott fires, completes it to who else? CeeDee Lamb. Number 88. He needs nobody else. Back to throw Prescott. And they are now into 49er territory as he hooks up with his man CeeDee Lamb again. CeeDee Lamb shaking off tacklers and fights his way down to about the 20. There's like three over three and a half to play in the game. Cowboys at the 9 or 20. Back to throw Prescott. Fires. End zone. CeeDee Lamb open again. Touchdown, Cowboys. And a Dallas fan is probably going, where the hell was this all game? Why did you just get it to CD all game? Like, seriously. This is the best the Cowboys have looked on offense the entire game. Where the hell was this? Insane. Or the Niners just decided to take the break, decided to step off the gas early on defense and regretted it. So now it's 30-24, 49ers. About three minutes to play. Just about over three minutes to play. Excuse me. So now here are the Cowboys with the ball back. Just under three minutes. 
Prescott drops back, fires, and it's going to be, oh, out of the hands of number nine as he tried to pull off an Eli Manning to Mario Manningham in Super Bowl 46. Fourth down and 10 for the Cowboys. Prescott rolling to the right. He fires, and oh, I think they're, oh my God, the Cowboys do not get pass interference. Wow, how does that not happen? I think Dallas got robbed on that one. And here's Guerrero, Garado, Gerudo Valley, number 31. And he will pretty much put the nail in the coffin as the 49ers will come out on top, 30-24, to against the Cowboys. And uh, I hate to say it, but uh, I think the Cowboys may have gotten screwed a little there. A couple calls that should have gone their way and didn't, but still a hard-fought victory. And... You know what, Dallas, that's on you for deciding to get involved late. So the referees were probably already making dinner plans and saw that, oh, now they want to start playing ball? Well, forget it. We're not giving you guys any breaks. Like, we already had dates set. We already had plans made and set. So it's on you guys that you decide to get this involved late. So, bleh. <laughs> So, um, yeah. Not quite sure what's going on with Dallas. I mean, clearly... They're having some issues of their own, but not that I'm complaining. <laughs> Thank you, 49ers. Despite your own injury woes, you found a way to get the job done. So thank you very much. And wow, huh? I think I better wrap this video up too. So that's going to conclude the recap for Sunday's action yesterday. Tonight, Monday Night Football, it's the Giants at the Steelers. And even though y'all think Pittsburgh should win this one easily, Giants seem to play better on the road. I don't know why. This might be a closer game than we all think it's going to be. Also, we got World Series Game 3 tonight. This time it shifts to New York for the next three games, if there's going to be a Game 5. But the way the Dodgers are kind of outplaying the Yankees right now, could be a sweep, but we don't know. I mean, the NLCS is a little wacky. The Dodgers will look dominant for one game, and then all of a sudden just didn't show up for the next. So who knows? But hey, if you all take time to watch this video, I thank you. And now I'm going to leave you all, and I might do another video later. Maybe talk a little NBA Sixers action, talk about the Flyers a little bit. We shall see. Who knows? So hey, Fly Eagles fly. Have a good day, y'all. Enjoy the week.